Hi, I'm Liam, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to do parallel processing in Python with Dask. If you'd like to explore this topic in more detail, check out the notebooks in my performance data science repository at the link below. Let's dive in by starting IPython. The imports we need for this are NumPy. I'm going to import that as MP and Dask as our parallel processing library. So there we go, import Dask. Now let's define a small random three-dimensional array so I can show you the problem we're thinking about today. We need some parameters first to set the size of this 3D array. I'm going to call the first parameter n small equals three, and that'll be the size of the first two dimensions of the array, while nt small equal five will be the size of the third time dimension of the array. We can then create our small array, and we're going to call it small array as mp.random, that's standard normal. So we're just drawing from a normal distribution. And the first two dimensions will have length n small and n small, and the third time dimension will have length nt small. For our problem today, we want to call a function on this 3D array, but the function can only accept 2D inputs. We can think of this as perhaps being a sequence of geospatial data or a sequence of images. So we need to loop through this third time dimension of the array. We now need a function that we can call on each 2D time step. We will call this time step function. The arguments for time step function are a two-dimensional array that we will call array 2D and a time index to record the time step. This function returns two variables and so the output will be a tuple at each time step. The first element of this tuple will be a transformed two-dimensional array, while the second element will be the time index. We will use this time index to ensure the order of the outputs in parallel processing are the same as the order of the inputs. Now, before we, we define a parallel processing function, it's a good idea to define a serial processing function. This serial processing function allows you to do two things. Firstly, you can use the serial function to test that the outputs of the parallel function are correct. Secondly, you can use the serial function to check if you're getting a useful speed up, or indeed any speed up, from the parallel function. We call our serial function serial processing, and it looks like this. In the, the input to the serial processing function is a three-dimensional array that we call array. In the first step, we loop through the third dimension of the array that we see here in this row here. And on each iteration, we call time step func on a time step of the array. This creates a list of tuples for each time step where each tuple has a 2D array and the time index. We then loop through this list and take just the first element of each tuple to end up with a list of 2D arrays. Finally, we call mp.stack on this list of 2D arrays to create the 3D array that is the output of our serial processing function. We can now call this function to get some serial outputs. Before proceeding, it's always a good idea to test that the outputs are correct. In this simple example, we can do this by checking that the serial results are the same as just calling np.exp on the input array. We can now move on to define our parallel processing function, which we call Dask Processing. Dask Processing has two inputs, the three-dimensional array and the string called backend. The backend string tells Dask whether to do parallel processing using a multiprocessing backend or a threading backend. We'll see the difference this makes later. The first step in the function is to tell Dask which backend to use. In the second step, we do the loop through the third dimension of the array. The difference is that instead of just calling time step func we, on each iteration, we call dask.delayed of time step func. We'll look at this syntax in more detail later. This creates a list of outputs but the elements of the list are actually dask.delayed objects rather than the outputs of timestep func. In the next line, we resolve this by telling Dask that we wanted to go ahead and compute the outputs by calling dask.compute on the output list. The output list is now a list of tuples. With parallel processing, we can't expect the outputs to be in the same order as the inputs. We can ensure that we get the outputs in the right order by using the built-in sorted function. This function uses the first element of each tuple, the time index, to sort the, uh, to sort the list of outputs. The final two lines are the same as the serial processing function. In this line, 
we drop the time index as we did for serial processing. So we have a list of 2D arrays. And then in this line, we use mp.stack to output a three-dimensional array. We can now create some desk outputs with a multiprocessing backend. And we can check that these give the same results as the serial processing function. Now we can have a look at how the parallel processing performs, but for that, we'll need a larger array. In this case, we'll define some new variables for our large array. And large equals 300 for the first two dimensions, and mt large equals 500 for the time dimension. With these, we can now define our large array. We will time the output of the serial and parallel processing functions using the IPython time it magic. For this example, we will set both n and r to 1 to time the function over a single call. In practice, you should do multiple iterations to understand the variability of performance. For serial processing, we see that the function takes about four seconds to complete. We will now test the performance using Dask with a multiprocessing backend. We see that in this case, the multiprocessing backend is actually slower than the serial processing function. We'll think about why this might be later on. First, though, we will test the performance using a threading backend. Here we see that the threading backend is significantly faster than the serial processing function, and so it might be worth implementing. I want to caution that these results are for educational purposes only, given our definition of time step funk. We can see this by timing how long it takes to simply call np.exponential on the large array. This time of less than half a second is much faster than the fastest parallel implementation, and reminder that it's always a good idea to exploit NumPy's built-in routines wherever possible. Before wrapping up, let's take a closer look at the syntax for calling das.delayed. Without das.delayed, we call the time step func like this, or to make it clearer, we can color the function as red and the arguments as blue. With das.delayed, things are a little different. Instead of calling time step func directly, we wrap it with the das.delayed decorator in green. The arguments are unchanged, they are just passed to the output of das.delayed called with time step func. The outputs are also different. When we call time step func directly, it returns an array and the time index. However, when we call das.delayed on time step func, the output is a das.delayed object. To get das to compute the underlying function, we need to call dot compute on this object. So to wrap up, in this video, we've looked at how you can use das.delayed for parallel processing. We've seen how you can test the outputs to make sure they're correct. We've timed the outputs to compare them with our baseline. And we've had a closer look at the syntax for das.delayed. If you enjoyed this video and would like to learn more about making your data analysis more performant and robust, then hit the subscribe button below.